PGD is pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. There's really two types. There's pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, or PGD, which includes, since it's a diagnostic, it's single gene testing, like cystic fibrosis or Huntington disease or sickle cell disease. It can also be husbands or wives who are carriers of translocations or inversions. These are chromosome aberrations. They're balanced in the parent, but when they have an embryo or a fetus, it can be unbalanced and cause significant reproductive problems or the birth of a baby with a genetic syndrome. So they're diagnostic tests. That's considered PGD. The other part of pre-implantation genetic testing is pre-implantation genetic screening. That's what aneuploidy testing is. It's too many or too few copies of chromosomes. Down syndrome would be one example of that. I'm not, I'm not saying that Down syndrome kids are bad kids. That's not my point. But that's just a representative example. Too many or too few copies of chromosomes cause are responsible for about 70% of all first trimester miscarriages. So that can be screened in embryos for couples undergoing IVF. Historically, that's been used primarily for women who have had repeat first trimester losses or repeat miscarriages. And again, these being aneuploid. Over the years, with the new technologies where we're able to test for all 46 chromosomes within, within the cells, it's being used more and more readily for patients not just who have repeat miscarriages, but also patients who have unexplained infertility, um, who may have a previous, you know, affected fetus or an affected baby, um, or by choice. They just want to do it. There are some clinics now that are actually offering PGS to all patients, regardless of their history. I think that's still a little controver controversial. Um, I don't think the data is completely there to support it. But I think with the pregnancy rates that we're seeing in all the clinics that we do testing for, our pregnancy rates are about 75%. So when one has a pregnancy rate like that, that's significant. And it makes people really think about, well, should we really do it? So I think, again, I think it's the, the we have to let the data speak for itself, see how this plays out. But I think that probably in the near term, I don't mean in six months or a year, but I would say within a couple of years, I think all women who are undergoing through IVF or some type of infertility will do pre-implantation screening.